In this video, I'm taking a chord progression in the dreaded key of A flat major. I'm going to play through it, do a few little moves, and explain everything I do at each step of the way. So sit back and hope you learn something. To begin, let's start with the scale of A flat, so that our beginners can follow along. Now, that was the scale of A flat, and you'll notice that I played four black notes in there with another A flat at the top. So we've got four black notes, B flat, E flat, A flat, and D flat. B, E, A, D, that spells the word bead, makes it nice and easy to remember. We've got those black notes, and we've got these white notes, C, F, and G. So if you're just starting off, I would recommend just going up and down the scale a couple of times, try to keep it consistent and smooth, Notice the fingering that I was using, my thumb only landed on the white notes. It makes sense because your thumb is shorter than your other fingers, so, so you don't want to have to reach up to a black note with your thumb, so the thumbs fall on the white notes of the scale. And that applies to all the scales. Now, in our key of A flat, let's look at the chord positions just very quickly. We've got A flat as the one of the key, the first note in the scale, and the three major chords that we'll be looking at are the one, the four, and the five. The first, fourth, and fifth. So one, two, three, four, five. So A flat, D flat, and E flat are the three major chords in this key. There's your A flat triad, D flat triad, and E flat triad. One thing to notice is that they look very similar. They've got two black notes on either side, a white note in the middle, D flat chord. Two black notes on either side, one white note in the middle, and same thing for E flat. Okay, so they're quite easy to learn if you learn them as a group in the key. Now the minor chord that we're going to use in our progression is the relative minor of the key, which is the sixth. One, two, three, four, five, six, which is the F minor. It's called the relative minor. It's related to the key. It's the most commonly used minor chord in the key of A flat, F minor. Okay, so let's head on to our progression. So we've done our preliminary basic work, just getting ourselves familiar with the one, four, five, our three major chords, and our relative minor, which is the sixth. We've played our scale, so we know what notes we're going to use in this progression. The first chord is F minor, as you can see on the screen. I'm putting a fifth in the left hand. F and C in the left hand. Now straight away I think I'll, I'll insert a 2, a G, because it makes the sound a little darker, a bit more mysterious, more sad, doesn't it? Okay, let's move to our next chord. We've got our D flat. And I'm going to play it like this. This is D flat major 7. I've got a 5th in the left hand again. A flat is the 5th of D flat, so... Fifth. F in the right hand is just a third of D flat. It's that middle note. Remember? Two black notes on either side. White note in the middle. That's the F. But I've also got some C's in there. Now, going back to our D flat chord, we've got D flat, F, and A flat. If they're the 1, 3, 5, then the C must be the seventh. Okay, so 1, 3, 5, seventh. So, so this C changes the chord and it's then called D flat major seventh. But why did I choose that? How did I choose that? Well, I started off with an F minor, with a 2 in it. I'm trying to keep the sound smooth and consistent, so I'm trying to retain the F and the C and keep them flowing into my next chord. Keeps it nice and smooth. Let's just play these two chords for a little bit. smooth that transition was because I didn't change the notes. Still playing F and C's for both chords. So I'm using those notes to bridge my two chords because they're common to both chords. Okay, let's go to our A flat. This is a very plain A flat that I'm playing. Remember A flat is two black notes, one white note in the middle. So that's all I'm playing in the A flat tried with no extra notes, no twos, no, no sevens or anything. And there's my E flat. Once again, it's a plain E flat triad. E flat, two black notes, 
one white note in the middle. Standard arpeggio in the left hand, one, five, one. F minor with a two. Major seventh on D flat. Now this time with the A flat major seven, or rather I should say this time with the A flat chord, I changed it into a major seven by adding the G, G being the seventh note of the A flat scale. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's called A flat major seven. Keeping my E flat plain as I did before. Okay, let's go back to F minor again. Now before I added the two in there, now I'll make it into a minor seven as well. So F minor, one, three, five, seven, E flat. Now how do I know that was gonna be E flat and not say E? Well, as soon as I played the E, you can tell that wasn't going to work so well. But it's because these notes have to come from the scale of A flat. So if you haven't worked that out yet, now's the time for that to really sink in. I can only play notes from that scale. So if I want to add a note, uh, to my F minor chord to make it sound a little bit more interesting, I can only choose notes from the A flat scale, the scale that I'm currently playing in. So it's got to be E flat, I can't put an E in there, it's not part of my scale. So A flat, still I'm keeping it quite plain. Now the reason why I'm doing that for the A flat and for the E flat is because my first two chords are a little bit richer. You can hear that they've got a, a rich, slightly fancier quality about them. And, and just like you would uh, when you're, let's say you're eating rich food, too much of it, you know, you get a little bit sick. The best thing to do after you eat a lot of sweet, rich food maybe is to just balance it all out with a nice, plain glass of water, which is what this A-flat chord is. Okay, so my F minor is where I'm doing the, the fancy chords, putting the seventh, putting the two in. Now you'll notice that on that D-flat, that time I was going a little bit, getting a little bit adventurous there by putting a G in. purposely creating some harshness. Still from the scale of A flat major, so I can use that. Okay, on my E flat chord that's coming up, I'm gonna try something different. I'm gonna put a C in there. It has a, gives it a more floating feel. Some of you might even think that sounds wrong, but in context, it's okay. There's my C again on the E flat chord. some B flats into my A flat chord, making it A flat two. My C again into my E flat chord. C is the sixth of E flat. Using the E flat scale now, one, two, three, four, five, six, I've got the sixth in my E flat chord. Gives it a, I call this the new sus, sort of like a suspended sound, but sort of be resolved. Now this progression, if you haven't worked it out yet, it's very common and I've used it many times in other videos except I'm usually in the key of C and not A flat. F minor, 6. D flat is the 4th, then 
A flat is the one of the key, and E flat is the five. So it's a, a six, four, one, five progression. Okay, let's do a slightly different take on the F minor chord here. I've got F and B flat on the left hand, which is the fourth. So instead of a fifth, I've gone for a fourth. And then I've got a C and E flat and F in the right hand. So I've got no A flat in my F minor chord, which makes it sound less minor. For my D flat chord, I've retained the same right hand, once again for smoothness, but it also creates an interesting effect. I've got the seventh in here, I've got a, a two in there. So it's like a D flat major nine, because I've got the seven and the nine, or the seven and the two. But seven plus two equals nine, so it's a D flat major nine. For my A flat chord, I'm just going with an A flat two. You can see the two there, the B flat, the two of A flat. Now E flat's pretty standard, maybe I'll put a C in, give it a floating feel. I could even put an F at the top, E flat two. Now incidentally, these are John Legend's All of Me chords. It just doesn't quite sound like his song because I'm playing them in quite different inversions and different chord voicings, but we could try it. It'll sound like this. What would I do without your smart mouth? Drawing me in and you kicking me out. Gee, that's a high note. Sound like a dead cat just then. What would I do without your smart mouth? Drawing me in and you kicking me out. You've got my, uh, what have you got? You've got my head spinning. No kidding, I can't pin you down. So the only difference is that he's he sort of plays it as. Something like that, whereas I'm using all these fancy twos and sevens. And no, I'm not going to sing the rest of it. Well, I hope you've learned a few interesting ways to voice those chords, and for the, for the beginners, I hope you've just learned how to play in A flat a little bit better.